Hello, everyone. Welcome to iHeartRadio's CEO Unplugged. I'm Joe Bartlett. Our guest today, Jeffrey Hill, the CEO of Hill 3 Investments, a family-owned investment company. Also served as a senior marketing executive with firms like Procter & Gamble and Tam Brands and has done consulting work for several Fortune 100 firms. His latest venture uh, is going to be a talk show right here on iHeartRadio on Sundays. So uh, welcome, Jeffrey. Good to talk to you. It's great to be here, Joe. Um, you've had an interesting career. You know, I, I read about you in uh, the book 21 Questions for 21 Millionaires. And um, one of the things they said when you talk to you is you better keep up because you like to move. There you go. <laughs> so what keeps you moving? Well, you know, I have a lot of energy and a lot of enthusiasm for the things that I'm doing right now. And probably the most important thing that I know we're going to get into is the focus that I'm uh, investing into my philanthropy. Mm -hmm. So I'm spending a tremendous amount of time on epilepsy and autism through what's called whole plant solutions, which is the topic we're about to get into. So before I preempt that, why don't don't you lead? Well, let's talk. I I want to talk a little bit about you um, and and your 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 approach to business. I mean, in in reading about you, you're you're kind of motivated by watching your dad work. So, yeah, my mom and dad were very motivating. So I spent a good deal of my time when I was young in the hospital. In fact, several years at a time. And they came and visited me every day. And at the same, by the, uh, during all of that, my dad uh, ran a jewelry store and a single proprietor. So he was there from 9 a.m. till 6 at night every single day, six days a week for 50 years. Stunning. And, you know, you, and you've been very successful. And one of the things that's, that's nice to see with successful people is that they do want to give back. Um, and and I, I think that's, that's important, no matter whether you're successful or not. I mean, you should do some sort of uh, community outreach or community work. Just... Just because you're, you're obligated to do that. So what's, well, what's your motivating factor? Well, you know, it's kind of a funny thing. I give a lot of presentations, and most recently I gave a speech, the three phases of life. So the first phase of life is getting out of college alive, mm-hmm. literally. Yeah. And we all know people in high school and college that had all kinds of problems that took place. Could be an accident in a river. It could be a sporting accident. They didn't get through. Second phase is the accumulation phase, which virtually everybody's involved in throughout their entire adult life. Um, the third phase is after you've kind of worked your way through your family and your extended family and you feel like you have everybody kind of more or less in a good place and you can move on you can help community and you can help society and that's phase three the give back phase so i'm thrilled to tell you that i'm i've arrived in phase three and it's an exciting place to be and i'm excited to talk to you because you are uh, one of uh, a lot of people who have um, invested in the cannabis industry and yes, it's, it's a scary industry for a lot of people so tell us what you see uh, exciting about cannabis Sure. I, I, I think the most exciting thing about it is it's probably the most important uh, health impact that we've had in the last 100 years. So the secret behind cannabis is really that it is the most medicinal, most efficacious product that is currently impacting a number of people all over the world and a number of health conditions. You know, there's studies taking place literally in every country, um, oh, many of the developed countries, and I can explain where they are if you'd like. And um, so there's there's many clinical kinds of analytics that are going on that are describing the health outcome impact of cannabis. And that's really what drew me into this, because my philanthropy focuses on epilepsy and autism. Whole plant or cannabis, indeed, is a recommendation. The FDA has cleared a product called Epidiolex, which is a which is a CBD product. And uh, that product is proven, clinically proven, to have a major impact on a number of important health conditions. And that's kind of drawn me into the space. A lot of my associates and a lot of people in the industry are pretty excited about the medicinal implication of cannabis. It's funny that you talk about medicinal uh, implications because when I went to see my doctor for my checkup, I asked him about cannabis. I said, what do you think about it? And he goes, a lot of people are asking me about that. Uh, And he says, I've looked into it, but it's hard for him to make a determination or whether or not he as an MD can recommend it. So obviously they have a lot of other uh, limitations when they recommend treatment. But um, do do you see this thing kind of evolving even beyond? Well, certainly, I guess. Well, sure. I mean, there's um, there's several psychopharmacologists in the space with credentials similar to the gentleman that you referring to your GP, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These people have written multiple books and multiple analytics. Um, there's one individual, a woman who lives in New York City, and she's a psychopharmacologist, focuses on this area. She's called a holistic psychopharmacologist and uh, is prescribing this quite, quite boldly for all kinds of different health-related issues. So the clinical data is quite broad and quite robust. The issue is that there's virtually no college in the United States until just recently. One has finally stepped up. There's no major in cannabinoid science. There's no conversation in academic institutions in this country. You know, people that go through medical school don't get exposed. Yet in Canada, Israel, Colombia, 
Japan and a number of other countries, they've been exposed and been doing the analytics for up to 18 years now. And, and your focus is on, did you say epilepsy? Well, the most understood impact on health outcomes of cannabis and CBD. Now, let me underscore this notion of CBD, which I like to get into as we go. Sure. So people get confused sometimes about cannabis versus CBD, right? CBD is made from hemp, can be made from the marijuana plant as well, but the majority of it is made from hemp. And you may know that, you know, five months ago, the 2018 Farm Bill finally made CBD once again legal all over the United States. And then it comes down to a state-by-state level decision as to how they want to handle specific issues. But you can, you can set it across state line, et cetera. It's the CBD component that has everybody very excited about the health implication. And that, in concert with combinations of THC, uh, is really where the real solutions are. And how does it work? I mean, I mean in terms of sure. the, the relief that you get. Well, you may or may not know this, Joe, but inside your system, you have a cardiovascular system. I can. See I know right, all about that one. I, I see it right through your system. It looks beautiful. <laughs> In addition to that, uh, you've got an endocannabinoid system. Endocannabinoid system. Wow. All right? CBD, cannabinoid. So for all these years that you've been growing up and that I've been growing up and everybody else in this room, we've all not really understood that we have this endocannabinoid system that creates a sense of what's called homeostasis, a sense of calm, a sense of comfort in the body, right? The endocannabinoid system has been hunting all the food that you've been feeding it, you know, and as things come down into your stomach, it's looking around, it's the asparagus and the other wonderful things that you're eating, and it's going, well, where's the endocannabinoids to help me get to, end, to, get to, help me get to homeostasis, which is a sense of calm? Answer, they just came along five months ago, highly concentrated CBD, which is a cannabinoid, which matches up with the endocannabinoid system and makes you feel, you know, oftentimes quite a bit better. Now, I want to be clear, right? There's a lot of conversation around what the FDA is comfortable with and uncomfortable with, right? The FDA is uncomfortable with THC-related product, right? CBD, however, was passed through that, the farm the bill. T- THC is, that's the... THC is the, is the is psychoactive, yeah, right. right? That which you might have recognized from your college days. <laughs> yeah. Having said that, however, um, THC in combination with CBD, think of it as a turbocharger to the effectiveness of the healthcare medicinal side of CBD, which is critical to understand. And the philanthropy side of this for yes, you, sir. tell us how that works. Well, uh, for 18 years, I was focusing on uh, club feet because when I was a child, I mentioned earlier that I was in the hospital for a number of years and I had a club foot condition. And I was there for, you know, off and on for 12 surgeries, six on each leg, I think. It might have been less, but more or less 12. That's what the number I remember. And um, for 18 years, I did, uh, I, I, I invested some money philanthropically in kids that had, uh, that were uninsured with the same surgery I had when I was a kid. Well, I just moved all of that. Thanksgiving of last year, I moved it to pe- pediatric epilepsy and autism. So once again, focused on youth, which is the essence of what mm-hmm. I'm doing. But whole plants, whole plant, cannabis and CBD combinations, which is, you know, the breakthrough idea in addressing epilepsy and autism. How hard do you think it is to clear that hurdle to get CBD uh, legitimized as, as a medical treatment? Well, uh, it's, it's like any other hurdle, right? So right now it's considered a supplement. It's more like a vitamin, right? right? So the FDA is treating it more like a vitamin. Uh, having said that, if you look at Epidiolex, which was created by C.W. Hemp, um, they, um, they, you know, the FDA has, has approved it. Um, and that product addresses very specifically the epileptic situation. So, and it's also approved by the other FDAs in other countries, like the PMDA in Japan, Health Canada in Canada. We actually were the last to make a move in this area. I wanted to ask you about the efforts that are underway here in New York, in New Jersey, um, to legalize recreational marijuana. How does that play uh, with the pharmaceutical benefits that, that you get from cannabis? Well, you know, I'm not in it for the recreational side of the business, but recreation comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at Colorado, Washington, or Oregon, three of the most well-developed states, all rec states. So for your listeners, there's medicinal approval, which takes place in New York, and there's recreational approval, which is also known as basically adult use, mm-hmm. which means if you show your license, just like when you buy spirits, if you're over a certain age, you can now buy product. Right? There's 11 states currently, and I'm including Washington, D.C. as a state. So there's really 10 states plus Washington, D.C. where this is allowed. Right? 
My own point of view is that it often distracts from the medicinal value of the product. As you know, our governor has made several uh, efforts at getting it considered recreationally legal or adult use, and this $400 million in our budget, which is a 10% tax on a $4 billion business. The chances of that happening in the time that's been budgeted is virtually zero, but the energy is clearly towards more recreational use in more states, importantly driven by the economic side of it. Tell us a little bit about the financial side of this. You're in, an investor, um, and this is good because we want to make money for your philanthropic efforts. Thank you. So um, tell us about the upside of this financially. Sure. Well, uh, can I name a few of my enterprises? Would that be acceptable? Absolutely. Okay. So um, first of all, I projected uh, in November of uh, 20, uh, Thanksgiving, I wrote my first blog post. I have a blog. And it's talked about cannabis and CBD being the fastest growing category for the rest of our lives, which I completely believe in. And I've studied virtually every category in the universe, you know, from everything that's in a food, drug, mass merchant location to the car industry, the automobile industry, which I just mentioned, and any number of other industries. Nothing's going to grow as fast as this category. I projected a $22 billion business by 2022. For the first time in the history of my consulting life, I may be wrong by a factor of roughly 100. Oh, because this category has the potential to be more like 200 to $300 billion in a very short period of time, not 2022, but let's say by 2025. Now, I myself have such a strong point of view in this category that I'm investing at every level of the supply chain. And right here in New York City, I have two businesses. I have one called Alchemist Kitchen, which has got a kind of a, the mothership on 2nd Avenue and 1st Street, which is an herbology business that focuses on herbs, of which CBD is an herb. It comes from hemp. Hemp is a plant. The power of plants is what they're selling. And it's very, very viable and quite brilliant, actually. The CEO is a gentleman named Lou Sager, and he's a brilliant, brilliant guy, and he's very focused on helping people. The other business I'm involved in is High Falls out of mid-state New York, High Falls, New York. It's run by a gentleman named Rick Weissman, and he's doing seed-to-sale uh, farming, uh, what that means is he's producing his own seeds, he's planting them in his own ground, he's growing his own plants, he's extracting his own product, at least that's the goal, and he's making his own CBD. Now we have total control over what's happened to that product from seed, i.e. planting, to consumption, and that's high fall. So there's a number of companies doing things like that, and I'm very involved with many of these businesses. All right, well, Jeffrey, before we wrap up, how about um – uh, somewhere where people can get some little more information about you, uh, your blog, perhaps. Sure. Well, um, I'm going to be on iHeartRadio, which you'll be pleased to know, on your air, Absolutely. indeed, uh, starting, I think, 519 or something at 8 o'clock in the morning. So for the nine of you who are awake at that point in time, please make sure you tune in. Well, see, let me let me give you a little advice. That You may not get a lot of, well, hopefully you do get a lot of because you're going to attract a lot of attention, but you always have the podcast, so everybody right, so I have, can, you, yeah. you want me to share that? So medium.com slash at Jeffrey Hill 2 is my, is my blog, and uh, you know I'm very findable on Google. It's very easy to find me. I'm Jeffrey Hill, one, there's one of 2,000 Jeffrey Hills out there. But uh, if you look hard enough, you'll, you'll, you'll find it. And, and again, Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. right here on iHeartRadio. Jeffrey, thank you. Great to talk to you.